from Celeste King IV, one of the late son, one of the sons of the late great freedom fighter Celeste King III. Celeste King IV is a freedom fighter in his own right, a busy civil rights activist particularly dedicated to helping to raise the consciousness of and opportunities for young people. Celeste stays on the cutting edge of community and world events, so it's right up his alley to be part of today's unveiling of something that is truly on the cutting edge of musical percussion. Let's welcome Celeste King IV. Thank you. Damn, I don't know what to say after all that. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> um, well, it does give me a lot of pleasure to be here because I've watched Jimmy go through the uh, process of putting this together, and it's been kind of intriguing, especially for someone who has no knowledge of music whatsoever. You know, the only the only thing I think about music is is turn the radio on and turn it up loud. Um, so, anyway, what I'd really like to say to, to you, Jimmy, is this: I never thought that you would actually persevere and get this thing done, and to see you have standing back there now. And knowing that you did, hey man, it's all kudos to you. Because I really think you've done that you did something. Uh, the other day I was talking to a friend of mine who is a musician, and he said to me, he said, man, what are you talking about a drum? A two-headed drum? I said, yeah, that's what he said, it's a two-headed drum. He said, well, do you know there hasn't been a drum made in over 100 years? I said, what? He said, no, there hasn't been any real innovations in over 100 years. And I said, well, this two-headed drum is an innovation? And he said, not only is it innovation, he said, but it's historic. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, just, just one more second. We have a special way we want to do this. Um, we want it to be counted down because it's that big a thing. So if you would count with me. Jimmy moved on in life, and as he got older, his inventions improved. Fast forward to January 15th, 2008, when the two drum appeared to him in a dream. He looked down at what was not a regular conga drum, and he said to himself, what kind of weird drum is this I'm playing? I've never seen a drum like this before. He made himself jump up out of his dream, though not fully awake, looking for a pen and paper. He got up so fast, his family thought he was having a heart attack. He was asking, where's the pen and paper? Where's the pen and paper? That's when he said, here I go again with another new idea. And then he sketched the drum out on paper. He knew that if he didn't sketch it out then, he would forget it and lose the vision. He said he would call this the two drum, with his theme being the birth of a new drum on earth. And of course, the two drum is patented and copywritten. Jimmy James is not only recognized for his inventions, but he is also recognized as an outstanding video photographer. He has worked with professional entertainers such as Frank Sinatra Jr., Kim Fields, and Eddie Albert. He also works with the Franklin Press Agency, the Los Angeles Press Club, and the Press Photographers Association of Greater Los Angeles. He was a political photographer for renowned freedom fighter Celeste King III, serving as his videographer and news media director for about 15 years, and still works with the Celeste King III Foundation. Jimmy was also a music teacher for some 15 years, 10 in a class setting, and five as a private tutor. Jimmy's photography and videography accomplishments have been recognized with a silver bowl and bronze medal from the International Society of Photographers, awards from the videographer, a certificate of recognition from the California Legislative Assembly, and a certificate of commendation from Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa. I could go on, but on this occasion, we'll leave it at just the brief biography we can see that the two drum materializing from Jimmy James's creative genius, if I may call it that, really comes as no surprise. His lifetime of inventing things and being involved in music and entertainment prepared him for the vision in that dream that gave him and now us the two drum. So ladies, so ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. So, you know, it was, it's strange how Visions and stuff cut that like that from nowhere. You can be sitting down somewhere daydreaming and an idea come to you But when it come to you in a dream, it's a whole different spirit in there You know you're there, but you're not there. Just like I'm seeing everybody here now I can see you guys but in the dream is somewhere different, you know your mind spirit is someone else And when something pops in there like that and then when a the man upstairs give you a vision You don't question it. You just do it because when you start questioning things He'll be saying well, maybe you don't need it 
So well, that's what I did. Yeah. I, it was so strange. I, I don't know where it came from. I was dreaming somewhere else. And then all of a sudden, this dream just came and hit me in my dream. And I'm hearing this music somewhere. I guess somebody was playing some music somewhere next door, and there was some drums going on, and it went into my self-conscious. And I started playing this drum in my dream. Then I looked down, and I said, what is this? This is strange. So it sounded good. It sounded real good. And the vision that I got in my dream, it came to pass. It wasn't for Dan Rice here, it would never happen. I went to about seven different companies. No one couldn't see my vision, it was lost. Everybody was in the dark. The guys were just tearing paper up and drawing and still can get it, tearing paper about Jimmy, I still can see your dream. I cannot see that drawing. So anyway, this guy in the Corona said, well, I, I know a guy can maybe help you. And I said, oh, he said, Dan. I said, Motherland's music? He said, yes. I said, I passed by that many times, but I never stopped. So I came over and I brought the diagram to Dan. And Dan said, hmm, oh, kind of strange looking drum here. I don't know how it's going to sound, but let's try it. So he said, I got some connections in Africa and what he's going to do in Ghana. He sent a, he emailed uh, information out there and he emailed it to Ghana, Africa. And Ghana called back, his, his uh, work out there. And he said, hey, I can make it. Kind of strange drum. It'd be a challenge for me, but I can do it. So what happened, he said, give me about a week. I'm gonna go in the jungle, I'm gonna find the right drum to get the right sound, and he did. And Dan sent me an email, said, Jimmy, we found it. We found the tree, we found it, he found it. I said, good, tell him to start carving now. Get right on it. So he got right on it. And I said, look, Dan, I need some pictures of, of stages, different stages, how the drum is gonna look. So we did. He sent me an email, huge drum, about that size. You know, a tree, about that size, two of them. So he set them there, and that was the beginning of the drum. Then after that, it was stages and more stages. It was come to form, come to form. And then I brought a picture to Dan, and Dan looked at it and said, Hmm, Jimmy, I look like a woman's shape there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at it, and, and he said, Yes, it does. So I turned it upside down, and this had a nice little figure right there with, <laughs> with a 10 inch and 11 inch at the bottom, you know. <laughs> so Vin Marine was here. The actor, he looked at us and said, man, check this drum out. It was just a shell then. He was all excited. He said, wow, I love this drum. I want to be the first one to buy this drum. I got to have this drum. I said, you know, you can have this one. This was a prototype. We'll make one for you. So we, Dan is working on it now. We're going to get one for Van Bereen. And he said, you know, there's something strange about this drum. It's like a woman's body or torso or something. So he ran out of his car, got his wife, came back, said, honey, 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 look at this drum. What did it look like? So it looked like a shape and maybe need a bikini on it or something. <laughs> so, you know, getting information like that and, and, and feedback from, from a, a high top guy like that. You know, Vimber Reed been out there for a long time acting, so I figure I must have something good going here. So he's going to be the first one that we're going to sell one to. So I hope, go, I hope we go real far, go out there, we all can make some money and... Dan was very pleased with it, and you know I thank him for seeing my vision. And I was about to give up. I said, "Man, nobody don't even see nothing. I'm the only one who can see this." So Dan see it. So Dan said, "No, we're gonna fix this up to make sure it works." So he did. You know, so his guys are great. His guys are professionals. I mean, these guys was carving. We was fixing things up and straightening stuff out and sanding and drilling the holes and making sure everything is right. And there it is. You know, and I said, "Wow, that looks real nice." But it's, you turn it upside down, it still looks like a shape. So I want to thank everybody for coming out. And, you know, like I said, I'm not a much of a speaker, but it seems like sometimes a mic hit you and you just start talking, you know, it comes to you. We have another addition to the program right now. Mr. Steve Miller is here to do a presentation.